It hasn't happened in over a century. A president running against a president. In 1912, telescope Teddy Roosevelt, who'd already been president, came out of political retirement and ran under the Bull Moose Party against Republican incumbent William Taft and Democrat challenger Woodrow Wilson. Taft and Teddy split the base and handed Wilson the White House. And over 100 years later, voters will get to choose between two presidents again. The rematch is coming. All right. In this video, we're going to take a look at Jesse Waters pointing out something that should be obvious to everybody. But my name is Noel Battling MS. Let's take a look. After Donald Trump swept 14 out of the 15 states on Super Tuesday, putting him a whisker away from clinching. Now, these two men are officially on a collision course. November 5th is going to go down as the single most important day in the history of our country. We're going to take it and we're going to make it like it should be respected. Last night, Nikki Haley won Vermont and dropped out. And today came just shy of endorsing Donald. The time has now come to suspend my campaign. In all likelihood, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee when our party convention meets in July. I congratulate him and wish him well. Nikki will make a pilgrimage to Mar-a-Lago and negotiate an endorsement. She's got a little leverage, so we'll see where she lands. But no one took Super Tuesday harder than the media. I'm wearing a funeral chic today because I'm so devastated over what we saw <laughs> yesterday. If we let things play out along these lines, our democracy will fall and we will become a country that doesn't have elections anymore. What's wrong with you people? Why do you hate America? What? The media is working overtime to convince you not to vote for Trump. And the more and more they try to convince you, the more and more people are waking up and realizing that, what the hell are they talking about? How do you vote for a guy that says America is terrible? They're bitter about the democracy they say they're saving because they can't control it. You have the power and that kills them because they don't understand you or the issues. I mean, if you look at some of these exit polls, I mean, I live in Virginia. Immigration was the number one issue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, these could change in, in Virginia. Well, Virginia does have a border with West Virginia. <laughs> very, very contested area. Thinking, Build a wall. Like, what? I mean, when I was in New Hampshire, people were talking about the northern border yeah. as a threat. Because Trump has indoctrinated people with this fear of people who do not like look like them. Yeah. It's crazy how Trump has created this narrative and people are believing him. So shout out to Donald Trump, Trump 2024. He's doing an amazing job. Being a threat to that. Two weeks ago, a Venezuelan illegal was arrested for raping a little girl in Virginia. MS-13 controls large swaths of the Commonwealth. Migrant kids who don't speak English are packing into Virginia schools. Housing costs are up. Virginia's allowed to care about more than just Virginia. Virginians are Americans too. They don't want to see a country invaded. They don't want to see Georgia girls murdered by Biden's migrants either. How can we avoid the truth? The fact that we are being invaded and we need the government to respond to the invasion and do something about it and not just talk about it like it's okay. That millions of people are coming into the country illegally. Crazy. Why is that hard to understand? Virginia's watching New York and Chicago get overwhelmed. They don't want to be next. Not all of us live on an island like the Vineyard, where liberals deport migrants to military bases 24 hours after they touch down. Immigration is the top issue in the country. The media is mocking it. They're mocking you and calling you racist for caring. Republican voters don't vote that way. They don't vote based on economics or based on the benefits they're getting economically from the president. I hate how they group people together in terms of Republican voters, Democrat voters. How about Americans? How about American voters? What's our best interest? And stop putting other countries' interests first. They're increasingly, from the Tea Party on, they're voting on race. They're voting on this idea of an invasion of brown people over the border. The idea that they can't get whatever job they want. Again, using color. Talking about race. Who the hell is talking about race? That doesn't exist anymore at a large scale. A black person got it, therefore drive all the blacks out of the colleges, get rid of DEI. That is what they're voting on. They're yeah. just voting specifically on racial animus. We got to get rid of DEI. 
That's one of the worst ideas implemented. Choosing people by their color of their skin. What are we doing here? How about skills? How about hiring people because they're good at what they do? Because they have great skills. Not based on the color of their skin. This is so backwards. Now, if wanting strong borders is racist, then Chicago must be Klan country. Because black Americans have been screaming at politicians to sweep the migrants out. Joy doesn't know that. Eric Adams, the New York mayor who appears to be black, says migrants are destroying the city. That's not racism, that's reality. But now that every Republican's been declared racist, the media demands Democrats storm the beaches of Normandy and slay Trump like Hitler. We were Americans and we were there to save Europe from Hitler. And now all of these years later, we have to get together as a country and save the country from the threat that Donald Trump proposes. What? You're racist, Trump's Hitler, and immigration's a joke. That's how the media is covering the election. And they still won't cover Trump. And we have no choice. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it is. Uh, that cable network is like an extreme left network. And less and less people are listening to it. Everybody's turning away and realizing that they are so biased. It's ridiculous. We got to get rid of them. So vote Trump 2024 so we can get rid of this network. Or well, I hope we just flee and realize that we are just being shepherded into the plantation and being made slaves. Okay. I will say that it is a decision that we revisit con constantly mm -hmm. in terms of the balance between allowing somebody to knowingly lie on your air about things they've lied about before and you can predict they are going to lie about. And so therefore it is just, it's irresponsible to allow them to do that. It's responsible to censor. That's the argument. This is a preview of the next eight months. Stupid racists can't see their nominee talk about the nation's number one issue. Last night, as graceful as he always is, Trump appealed to the media's better angels. We need a fair and free press. The press has not been fair, nor has it been free, but maybe someday they will be. They're being beaten up pretty badly. People aren't trusting them. They're not believing them. And really, it's a very important fact. The press used to be the policemen it used to police our country now nobody has confidence in them and we have to get that confidence back it's so important for the success of our country but the that was a great speech by trump and that's how you got to talk like a politician right so he could reach more people so he doesn't sound crazy and i think that was a great speech right there and he has been doing that talking at a level that everybody sees that he's not crazy he's actually good so keep it up, Trump. The media doesn't want a successful country. They want themselves to be successful, but they don't care if the country goes down the drain because of it. The media chooses the politicians for you. And if you don't go along with that, the next day you wake up, have a cup of coffee, scramble some eggs, turn on the tube, and they scream at you like they're a drill sergeant. Donald Trump insults our men and women in uniform every day. These young men and women in uniform go through basic training. They kill themselves. They sacrifice their lives committed to one thing, protecting and defending you, protecting and defending your rights, protecting and defending the United States of America. So how is Donald Trump affecting the military? What is he doing that's affecting them? And you trash them? And you vote for a man who trashes them? That is just shameless. I mean, that's a morning show. <laughs> he doesn't even say how Trump insults the military. It's just a hoax. Just like they say migrant crime's a hoax. They're going to hoax the whole election. They're new hoax. You ready? Biden's brilliant. Start your tape right now, because I'm about to tell you the truth. And F you if you can't handle the truth. This version of Biden, intellectually, analytically, is the best Biden ever. 
Um, not really sure this is the best Biden will ever be is a good pitch. This version of Biden is Biden at his best. Biden needs note cards to say good morning. It doesn't get any better than that. Binder was asked about it earlier. Watch. Why does the president rely so heavily on note cards? You're upset because it's because he doesn't remember anything. He had to look at a notepad in order to say the right thing or what his handlers are telling him to do. It's crazy. Because the president has note cards? No, you're no, you're no, asking no, me a no, question no. about the president having note cards? I'm asking why. The president who has it? had a probably one of the most successful first three years of, of an administration than any modern day president. He's done more in the first three years than most presidents who had two terms. You're asking me about note cards? All right, Socrates with note cards. FDR without the wheelchair, his garage is Fort Knox, his son's Einstein, indistinguishable from David Hasselhoff on the beach. A midnight owl, a workaholic that no one can keep up with. How can it be that no one else feels this? Look at California. 14% of the people who voted today feel that their family is getting ahead. Mm -hmm. 14. Only a, that's a little bit of people feels that they're getting ahead. What are we doing? Everybody's realizing that this guy sucks and that we're backwards. 14%. Yeah. That's abysmal. Can you tell people that the democracy issue, while existential, is more important than that actual experiential issue that people are facing, which is they don't feel that they're moving ahead? Only 14% of Californians, Biden's base, are better off under him. And he's rambling on about snacks. In fact, some of the small snack companies, you won't uh, and think you won't even notice what they're doing uh, when they charge you just as much for the same size bag of potato chips, only has a hell of a lot fewer chips in it. I'll tell you what I tell you who did notice the cookie monster. <laughs> he pointed out cookies are his cookies are getting smaller, paying the same price. <laughs> I was stunned when I found out that's what actually happened. He's talking about missing chips. The cookie monster. Even Democrats, most loyal voters, ride or die, have had it with this cornball. I think President Biden, he kind of sold a dream that he couldn't accomplish. His famous quote was that for African-American, you weren't black if you weren't didn't vote for Joe Biden. Now, the Biden alliance, consisting of politically correct sheep with coastal degrees, federal bureaucrats, the deep state, androids and big tech, and the media tribe, who's greatest fear is social banishment, are going to run this election like a military campaign. Right now, as we speak, Washington is erecting a fence around the Capitol in anticipation of Biden's State of the Union tomorrow. Not a fence around the border, a fence around Biden, who thinks he needs protection from you while he doesn't provide protection from them. Now, this fence is a sinister symbol to stigmatize half the country's dangerous to justify his crackdown. Even though we outnumber them, they're powerful and will overwhelm you with shame from now until November. They'll call you names, treat you like ogres, threaten you, threaten your job, your family, your status. This will be an all out war by Biden's alliance against the American people in the name of saving democracy, which is the most cynical part of this. They'll try to separate you from your senses, your instincts, from your conscience. You know what's right and wrong, but they'll get in between you and your heart and they'll make you doubt it. This election will not be about policy. That's the last thing they want it to be. It'll be a blood sport, the ugliest campaign in American history. Now, usually it's the politician who gets destroyed, but now they're targeting you. So prepare yourself and stay strong. Hopefully Trump picks the Vic. Because I think he's going to be the next president after Trump. So that means that they get to be the VP for four years. And then he gets to be president for another eight years. So let's just cross our fingers and hope that Trump picks the back. Verbal. On life. <laughs> my name is Noel Battling a Mass. Doing my best to continue to go live. With that said, peace out. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace. Trump 2024.